Meanwhile, let's go ahead and take a look and see what it actually did. So going back to the C drive, we can go to program data and then to Bentley and then MicroStation Connect Edition. Here you'll notice a configuration folder. And within the configuration folder, you will find all of the rest. So we'll talk a little bit more about things in here uh, when we talk about workspaces and work sets. But here you can see there's where our workspaces are. Well, once MicroStation gets started, we can start talking a little bit about our CAD standards. So let's move on and take a look at what CAD standards mean and how we can get to them. So we're talking really about setting things up, making your settings correct, and doing it through a process that we call workspaces and work sets. Now, workspaces and work sets are aggregated or compiled into a configuration. Let's start with work sets. We'll kind of work our way backward, work our way from the bottom up. Work sets are your projects. They're the actual project that you're working on. There may be many other CAD standards that are project specific, and those would be essentially deltas to our standard uh, or normal CAD standard. So projects is the work set. How do we arrange our projects? The beauty of aggregating your project data into a workspace is that all of the CAD standards that are used by that client, by that facility, all those CAD standards are now available to every project, including new projects. So if you start a new project at the facility or with a new client with the client, You've already, you've already got their CAD standard. You've already got the standard. You just need to add in your deltas into the work set, a new line style perhaps for that project. So work sets are grouped into workspaces and all projects go into a workspace. We do not have projects or work sets that are independent. It is possible to have an independent workspace though. So that's perfectly cool. And wrapping it up then, the configuration is simply a collection of workspaces. So perhaps you have multiple clients. We have multiple facilities. So I'd ask you to focus on projects. I want you to think backwards here. I want you to think about what projects do I have. And then I want you to start to classify them. Don't do this inside MicroStation. Don't do this on your computer. Sit down with a piece of paper and think about how you organize your project data. Start from the, the end in mind. Start with the end in mind. And then think about how you group your projects as workspaces. And then think about how you're going to collect your workspaces into a configuration. Let's walk through this process and show you how it's done. Let's go ahead and jump into MicroStation. So here at MicroStation, um, this is our start page. This is where you get started with creating new files, creating new workspaces and work sets, and browsing for any files that you would like to open. So uh, those browse and create new file are pretty obvious. The work set itself is not so obvious. So you'll see here right now, um, I have no workspace nor do I have a work set. In fact, there's even something called a role that you could actually activate as well. So let's skip that part for now. Let's focus in on the workspace and work set. Now, as I have mentioned, it's important for you to have had thought about how you create and store your projects and then how you group them. The software itself is going to ask us to first create a workspace. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So when I select this, you'll notice that the pick list has a variety of different things inside of it. It's actually kind of an interesting pick list. It's got a search field. So if you have a lot of workspaces, it's easy to search. You'll notice there's a separator here called 
example configuration. And this is the actual examples that ship with MicroStation. So if you're interested in some example files and example workspace and work set, this is the example workspace. You also have the option down here to create a workspace, run a configuration assistant, or run the DWG work set wizard. Let's select create workspace. From here, you're given the option to provide a name. So I can go ahead and give it a name. And this can also have a description. And then there's the root folders. Where do you want to put this? Um, there's a lot of interesting locations that we can choose for both our root, our work set, or our standards. Generally, we want them to be the same. And generally, we want them to be someplace where we can find them. I'm going to leave them in the default location at the moment. But an option for me would be to go to the Browse button and select the location of interest in this case, which would be my uh, E drive. Um, so I'm going into project wise, which I don't have to do. And then I can go over here and say, I'd like to create this workspace and I'd like to create it on my E drive inside my Bentley Connect training inside my workspaces. So this would be an option for me. Um, I'll leave it set to default right now. And then we can talk about moving it to a new location. You notice that's the root of the workspace. And in fact, it is given a variable name. And now you're introduced sort of into the variable aspect of MicroStation, which is that folder locations, files that are being called out can be called out by a variable. So this variable in this case is called underbar USTN underbar workspace root. And that variable is going to be given the value C program data, Bentley, MicroStation Connect Edition, etc. Now the work sets are inside the workspace. So they have their own path, which is dependent on the workspace. It doesn't have to be but that's the default, so that the work sets live within the workspace. Again, you don't have to do that, but that's the default. So right now you can see that it's in the same location, just inside that work set folder, and you'll notice that it also has a variable underbar UST and underbar work set root. Then there are a bunch of standards that go with that workspace. So this is kind of interesting. This is where we locate our uh, cells or blocks, our design libraries, our line styles, our color tables, many of the other aspects that roll up into a CAD standard. And you'll notice this is a CAD standard for the workspace. So in my case, this is the Texas Department of Transportation. And the standards folder would point to the Texas Department of Transportation's CAD standards. If you needed to add additional subfolders, you can do so here by separating them with commas. And again, more variables there to help you do that automatically. Once I'm happy with my workspace, I can go ahead and click on OK. And there's my new workspace. At this point, it recognizes the fact that the Texas DOT workspace does not have a workspace. Would you like to create one? And yes, we would. And again, we're taken into a very similar dialog box called Create Work Set. Let's uh, give it a name. Now, um, there are templates here. Let's say that I've already created a work set. I've created another project for the I-35 area. And I would like to simply clone that work set. And that way I can just um, start with the exact same folder structure that I did with the previous one. Now, if I select one here, um, and I don't have one to select actually, um, I can clone the folder so I can create the folders and I can clone the data all the DGNs, design libraries, cell libraries those can also be cloned copy I have the option to just do the folders which most of us just do we don't want the actual data from the other project we just want the folder structure 
Oftentimes, it is helpful to get the data as well, and you can swap out what you want to swap out. In addition, you can add a custom property here to this particular project, perhaps a project ID number in the form of either a date or a string of text. Similarly, you'll notice that it picks up the same location for the root of the work set. So here, again, I can go browse for this, but by default, work set root is dependent on workspace root. So work set root actually uses the value for workspace root, which is C program data Bentley Microsoft Connect Edition configurations, and then tax on a couple of additional subfolders at the end of that to indicate that you are now inside of a project, inside of a work set. So that's the root of that. Where do I store my DGNs? Where do I store my CAD standards for this work set? And where do I, you know, what other additional folders do I need? I want to just spend a second here on the CAD standards. Now remember the work set CAD standards are essentially a delta, a change from the workspace, which was Texas DOT. So what things are specific to the I-35W Dallas Interchange project that are different from the Texas DOT standard that I'd like to include? Most often you'll find that in this particular area, they'll end up being things like raster data, aerial photography is different in every project, things like that. Finally, down here, you can actually tack on to a project-wise project. Now, project-wise is a brand name. It's not a product name. Project-wise indicates collaboration in the Bentley ecosystem. Project-wise has many products underneath it. But when we refer to project-wise, we're simply referring to, hey, we're going to include some collaboration tools here. Now, specifically what we're doing here with the project-wise projects is to collaborate through the cloud. And so when we select the Browse button, we're taken into a project association dialog. And this project association dialog is looking out to our cloud that's connect.bentley.com. And from connect.bentley.com, if I have created a project through the cloud, if I have been registered into a project in the cloud, then I can go ahead and actually attach the cloud data to my work set. So this is work set cloud data, and there's lots of different projects in here. Um, I can go ahead and actually attach one if I wanted to, but I'll, I'll leave that alone for now. Um, but this is a very interesting part. This is kind of more advanced feature, definitely. For most of us, the basics are fill out the name and description, make sure that we're in the right folder structure, and then you can click on OK. So. Now that I've got a project, a work set, and a workspace, you'll notice that some properties appear here. It tells me the name, the description, the workspace that it's associated with. There are no project-wise properties associated here. And if I go show all properties, you'll notice that I actually do have the ability to go to these folders. These are actually hyperlinked here, so I can click on the DGN, and it will actually take me to C. Program Data Bentley, MicroStation Connect Edition Configuration Workspaces, Texas DOT, Work Sets, Interstate 35W, and there's my subfolder. So there's my CAD standards, by the way. The CAD standards for this project are inside the subfolder of Interstate 35W. Currently, there are nothing, there's nothing in here, of course. They're empty. It's just an empty project ready to be populated with work. Um, one of those things may be to create a new file, and then you simply go ahead and create a new file. And here's the beauty thing. 
And you're probably wondering, okay, that was a lot of setup. Why? This is something that all of us experience on a daily basis with computers. We're constantly looking for the right folder. We're looking for the right folder to open a file, to save a file, whatever it happens to be. We're folder hunters. And that's the problem. We're up the tree, down the tree looking for folders. Notice that when I select new, MicroStation automatically knew that a new file in this project must be placed in this folder. So it automatically takes me there. So um, give it a name. There is a template file, a seed file that was used to create the new file. This one is a metric file and it's in two dimensions. So when I click on OK, it's going to go ahead and create that file using the 2D metric C file or template. It's called TX1, so it gives me the title and I'm taken directly into MicroStation with my new file. So one more step here. Let's just take a quick look and see what we've got. Why, again, why? Why workspaces? Why work sets? When I go and do anything with a file open, you'll notice that it will automatically take me to the correct location. So look at this. So here we go again. I'm attaching a reference, an XREF perhaps, and I'm saying, please go ahead and attach the, uh, a file. It says, all right, I'm going to take you to the, this location right here. Again, it takes me to that DGN folder of the Interstate 35W project. And I don't have to go hunting. I don't have to go figure out where my files are. That's why workspaces are so important. In addition, when I go select something like a cell or a line style, I know that these line styles are the ones used by the workspace. So your first workspace and worksite are really critical. Start with the project first. Think about how you organize your projects. Then think about how you group your projects. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.